안녕하세요. 저는 세 모칠입니다. 제가 한국에서 가장 유명한 흑인 사람입니다. 안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하세요안녕하
what the hell does that mean? Hey, I know. I was like, what the hell does that mean? I was like, what are Africans supposed to look like? Right. But when you talk to them, some of them expect you to be smelly or smell in a, you know, some type of way, look a certain type of way, talk a certain type of way. And I remember there was a time that I wanted to get a cab and the cab driver wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't pick me up. I was like, what's up with that? It's like, I'm paying you, why won't you pick me up? And it was very, very shocking. Would it you was, say that type of practices, uh, is it still going on or? It, it still goes on. I feel like with the, with the taxi drivers, they play an important role, but they don't realize it. Because sometimes, you know, when people come here and they don't really know the subway system or the bus, they tend to take taxis. And their first sort of communication or interaction is with the taxi driver. So when they have a very bad experience, that experience lingers on. So they play a very important role. Like, well, some of the moments I was like, wow, what am I really doing here? Like, is this how people are gonna treat me? Like, I miss my family, I miss being Ghana where everybody's treated equally, like, what's up with this, you know, so. How do you work through something like that, like mentally? How do you kind of, you know, just keep moving forward? Look, it's not always gonna be roses. There are gonna be times people will discriminate against you and all of that, but if you wanna get over it, it's important that you quickly assimilate yourself with the culture and learn the language. Once that language barrier is broken, you know, things are gonna be much smoother. So that was what I focused my mind on that I was gonna do, yeah. Any other hardships, maybe financially? I was in a relationship with a certain person and she had to leave Korea, so it became a long distance. I get my bill one time and I looked at it and it's like almost $4,000. And I'm like, I'm here, I'm a student, I barely save enough to get me around. My first trip to Ghana, I had to borrow money from somebody. Okay. So I already, I already owed somebody. And here's this 4,000 bill in my face, like what do I do? So I made it a point to pay all the money. And it was not easy at all because I had to use my monthly stipend to pay for that. So there are times I couldn't even pay for my rent. There are times I didn't have even, just to put a dollar together was difficult to get on the subway to make it to school. And you make it to school, you have to worry about what you're gonna eat because you have no money. Fortunately for me, I had a Korean friend, you know, and I was like, hey, today I don't really have a lot of money. And he's like, okay, I got you. And he, he will go and he, he buys the food for me. And then I jokingly say, oh, wow, I made it to school. I don't know how I'm gonna make it back. And he's like, oh, come on, Sam, I got you. Give me a little money and say, hey, if you don't have money tomorrow, you can have like this money and just spread it all over the week. So sometimes I had to spread man one over the whole week. That will cover my transportation and food. And you know, and so you spend man one with just one meal or one cup of coffee. And I had to, I had to spend that in a week. You know, so there was, a, there was a month where it was really, really difficult. Like I basically had, like I barely had two cents to rub together. And I made a promise to myself that I'm never gonna come back to this condition or this situation ever again. Whatever it is, I'm just gonna push harder, I'm gonna work hard and make sure that I have enough for myself and for my family. So these, these tough times, they just did to build you up. Yeah. You didn't plan to be in, in the entertainment industry. I studied computer science, undergraduate level. And uh, also one of my, the very important lessons I learned. Do not let anybody dictate your life for you. Because prior to Korea, I had an uncle who convinced me. He said, look, Korea is an IT stronghold. Learn computers, learn IT. So I said, okay, fine. When I got to college, I was like, man, I don't really want to just sit behind computers all day and do this, it's not my thing. I rather want to go out into the society and try to solve problems and do all of that. But unfortunately, the system in Korea is such that you can't change your major. You know, so I had to go through like four years of struggling to keep up with something I didn't really enjoy. I wasn't, I wasn't really good at it and I was struggling with it. Yeah. You know, there was a point I really wanted to just quit the whole thing. One time I called my dad, I'm like, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. This is not for me. You know, my dad encouraged me to push him. So I realized that I needed to look for something else that was in me that I really, really wanted it to germinate. And I realized it was entertainment. So when I was in school, I joined a rap group. It's like R&B and hip hop group. And I realized that entertaining people was something that really gave me so much pleasure. So I got an opportunity to do this show called uh, Island Foreign Island Teachers. That changed my life completely. Because it was, a, it was the first of its kind where they bring people from different places, foreigners, and we go to the remote islands in Korea and spend about a week on the island and teach English to the kids and bond with the people. And I realized that at that moment that language is really, really important in breaking barriers. And just by being here, learning the culture, learning the language, I've been able to bond 
with these people on a level that I would never have imagined. So at that instance, I knew it was something that I wanted to do because I enjoyed it and I realized that I was able to make an impact. So I said to myself, if I really work hard at this and I get to a certain level where people are going to listen to what I say, I, as a representative of people of color in Korea, I can stretch the boundaries. Just feeling that sense of responsibility and that urge to really work and enjoy what I do, I decided I'll do it. So that, that show was the first one. But Hello Counselor, I would say really, really, you know, brought us in the limelight in the sense that it was an episode of racism. Korea用주세요. 한국을 좋아하는 정도 아니라 사랑하는 정도라서. Oh. 네. <웃음> that show just led to a different show, to a different show, and then eventually I got a call. They said, uh, "You've been casted for Pigeon Sangwada." I'm not Muslim, and that was it. At the time when it came out, it was one of the most popular shows. Yes, yes. In Korea. Yeah, within that year, it was voted the third most popular Korean TV show. Everybody knew about it. That was pretty much what shot us into the limelight. So everywhere you go, you're associated with that. How long has it been since you've actually come outside in public like this? Well, it, it might sound crazy, but I always have to come out with a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Understand that the reason why I'm on TV is because the fans want me there. If they don't want me, I'm not going to get any TV gigs and go on that. So I really, really appreciate that a lot. And I also let them understand, look, yes, I'm the guy you see on TV, but I'm the same guy you can see at the shop. I'm the same guy you go to the mart, you see me. I'll say hi to you, we can talk, you know. So for me, it's more of building that relationship with them. Yeah. So they don't feel like, oh, he's a star, he's a celebrity, he's there, I'm here. No, I don't like that. Any like fun or memorable experiences you've had uh, filming for a Korean TV show? Real man. Mm. What is it like a military training? Yes, type military training type uh, TV show, variety show, and uh, it's 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 pretty much it's very real. A lot of people come up to me and they say, "Hey, is Chinjas and I real? Is real man real?" I'm like it's real as it gets. So it was a show where a lot of people were getting hurt so much. Like yeah. you go to the show for uh, a week and somebody comes, you know, somebody's limping, somebody comes with a broken hand. There was one time. I had to jump from, I think, uh, 20 feet into the water. And you're actually supposed to land in the water with your body straight. So that's how you have to fall into the water. Right. But when I jumped, you know, midway in the air, my body slanted a bit. Oh. So I literally just fell really hard on my balls. <laughs> you landed on your balls? Yeah. Like, I have never felt that kind of pain in my loins as much as I did that day. I, 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 I thought I was dead for a second. But I could hear the officer telling me, swim, swim, come. And I remember being so angry and cussing under my breath like this. I'm, I'm literally dying here and you're asking me to swim. It was one of the near-death experiences that I had. I, I think you deserve every kind of thing that you have. Oh, man. <laughs> the, the things that you go through experiences do, yeah. like yeah. that. I, I take my hats off to a lot of entertainers in Korea who do what they do. It's not an easy task at all. People think it's always easy to go into you and be like, ah, yeah, everybody's happy. Like, no, it takes more than that. You were almost instrumental uh, in a certain way of kind of transforming or reversing some of the negative stereotypes that people have about black people. I knew that Koreans were, when, in terms of black people, they were always scared. They, they viewed us as dangerous. That Hollywood stereotype of black people, gangsters, probably got a gun, you know, all those things. But I decided to go opposite of that, which is, you know, very light character, 
very funny, easy to approach, positive, and they really like that a lot. Does it sometimes concern you that all this could just one day go away? I feel like as a foreigner, your entertainment career in Korea is short-lived, unfortunately. Unless, of course, you're able to rebrand yourself in you know very amazing ways. It's my goal to be one of the top actors in Korea. But of course, you know, you're hindered by the fact that you always have to play a certain role. Your role is the foreigner. And trying to break out of that is really, really difficult. Because when they write roles, they just consider you as a foreigner. They're not looking at you as an actor who can do any kind of role that they give you. I also believe that we're at an age or time where you also have to be able to create your own you have to create your own lane. I feel like there's still a lot of opportunities for me to be able to showcase uh, my talents to Koreans. You're running a juice bar right yeah. now, uh, which is a very nice shop. Thank you. Uh, it's just interesting that you know you're actually a foreigner, yeah. and you're running a, a yeah. business yeah. in Korea. Why juice bar? Because I, I feel like Koreans are trying to be more healthy, and we want to play a part in that. And I come here often. You know, I come here to interact with the people. Because I'm not just here to take their money, you know. I understand that I'm providing them with a service. So when I'm here, I try to interact with them as much as I can. If they want photos, I take with them. I send a lot of autographs. You know, I try to let them understand that I'm here. I'm not just the owner, but I want to bond with you people. It's about creating this special bond that we have. So I can give you healthy juice. I can entertain you as well. So you can keep coming back here. So. Can I try some of the juice? Of course, come on, man. You know, having spent a long time in Korea now, what do you see as like the biggest social issue here, right here in Korea? I think one of the most prominent is the fact that the young people have lost hope in the system. Because what's the point of you know, going to school, paying all that money, coming out and not being able to get a job to be able to sustain yourself? A lot of young people basically complain that there aren't enough opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yet, here you are, a black man from Ghana. Yes came to Korea with nothing, yeah. with the zero connections, no money, and yet still you made something out of yourself. So what can you tell to those that says that Korea has no opportunities? I believe that if there are no opportunities, you have to create your own opportunities. You know, I created my own opportunities by making myself better and developing myself as a person. I learned Korean language, I, I read the culture. I believe in Korea there's this trend where people have different talents and different things they want to do but because of the system they have to do what everybody's doing if you conform to what is happening you're only going to become a victim of that environment and you don't want to do that most important thing is people should not be afraid to fail korea has this uh thing where people always want to be perfect everything has to be perfect but in a normal world everything is not perfect and that is the reality people need to understand that it's okay to fail at what you're doing it's okay to not succeed all the time. The times that you're not successful, how you're able to pick yourself up and say, you know what, I'm still gonna fight till the end. That fighting spirit is really, really important. Well, all I can say is that after having had this chat, I can see why people love you. <laughs> and I'm very personally very inspired. I feel like an African boss now, thank you. <laughs> you're an African boss. Thank you, man, you're an Asian boss. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate what you're doing, man. It's great, keep it up.